Welcome back, guys. You're here for the Chapter 4, Lesson 5 video notes. This will be your last lesson for this chapter. So make sure that you are taking good notes. Make sure that when Ms. Hodges finishes the last slide today, you then go take your checkup while it's fresh in your mind. Okay, guys? So when we're talking about ancient Mesopotamia and the different city-states and the different civilizations there, we're talking about a long, long period of time. Um, even though we talk about these groups, you know, in the same group of notes, they're off what we don't realize between Sargon and Hammurabi, we're talking 600 years of time has gone by. Um, and over the whole history of ancient Mesopotamia, we cover almost 2000 years of time. So we got to remember we're, we're talking about big chunks of time. We remember that we don't know everything that happened 2000 years ago. We, we, we get our information in bits and chunks when we can find the artifacts to back up that information. All right, Mr. Miller here to take you through the Assyrian Empire. Now, obviously, we've heard some names. We've heard of Sargon, the Akkadians, or the Akkadians, if you prefer. Uh, we're, we've heard of uh, Hammurabi. It's going to be coming out of Babylonia. The Assyrian Empire, we do not have a man that we associate with the Assyrian Empire. So it's not like one person that we put on this. All right, so we just need to think of it as the empire. Don't worry about attaching a name to the Assyrian Empire. This one, if you think about the line of succession, it's going to come after Hammurabi, about 800 years after Hammurabi. It extended into the modern day countries of Turkey, Syria, Iran, and Iraq. Very powerful empire, large and powerful army, military might and strength, which is what they used obviously to conquer their very large empire. You can see on the map there how far it stretched from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean, all the way down into Egypt. They forced the people that they conquered to pay tribute Remember, that's like protection money. If you don't pay your tribute, there could be serious consequences. Our army just might come and destroy you if you don't pay your tribute. So you better pay up. A uh, key factor uh, in their success, especially with their military, is the efficient iron weapons. Very good at constructing iron weapons. The capital of the Assyrian Empire is at Nineveh. Now, that might be sound familiar if you're familiar with uh, any of the biblical stories. There's one very famous Bible story using the city of Nineveh. Um, the Assyrian Empire is so large that it's actually divided into provinces or political districts. We would think of this like states today. We say the 50 United States were divided into 50 states. Think of those like provinces. The empire is so large, they have to break it up into chunks, all right, into provinces or political districts in order to manage it and run it efficiently. They also continued to build roads to connect the provinces. Remember, we talked about Sargon doing the same um, in his empire. Uh, we're going to expand that concept with the Assyrians building roads. Their laws, obviously coming after Hammurabi, they actually took their laws up a notch. They were even more strict than the code that Hammurabi put in place. Their laws were more strict and more harsh punishments, if you can imagine that. Um, I know my class always thinks that the punishments in the code of Hammurabi are so extreme. It got even worse in the Assyrian Empire. They were also practicing polytheism, the worship of many gods. And they are going to be known for having one of the world's first libraries at their capital city of Nineveh. All right, that is the breakdown of the Assyrian Empire, guys. Coming up next, who is it? It's Miss Tickle. Okay, guys, now you have to be ready to do your hot questions. So again, if you need to pause the video, pause it, go back, rewind, listen to whatever you need to listen to. Your hot question says, how did the Assyrians, oh, I moved me up. How did the Assyrians rule their empire? So go back and listen to what Mr. Miller said. Um, remember, this has got to be three sentences. If you're in advanced class, you should be pushing towards five. Do not start this with a pronoun. I'm going to give you the, the way to restate the prompt. Um, it is the Assyrians ruled their empire by, and then you list the ways. Three to five sentences, no pronouns. 
use your vocab. There's already vocab in the restating of the prompt. Empire is vocab. Grab some vocab, guys. Okay, bye. Here's Miss Hodges. All right, so let's finish up here. Um, I really am excited about your hot questions. I see some good things coming and I've seen some good writing. So just continue to do that. Continue to bring us those well thought out answers that show us that you know what you're talking about. All right, so the Chaldean Empire. The, you may also have heard this pronounced the Chaldean Empire, but um, I think the H is silent, so I'm going to say the Chaldean Empire. So that's the way we're going to pronounce it. So they're going to take um, power around 650 BC after several rebellions against the Assyrians. So they, it took them a while to, to conquer the Assyrians. Um, okay, now here we go. Remember, this is where I told you we don't have to pronounce them correctly. We just have to recognize them when we see them. So Nabopolassar led the rebellion. Then his son, Nebuchadnezzar, ruled with him. And again, this is, and he establishes the new, new capital city of Babylon. So Nebuchadnezzar was the leader, the most well-known leader of the Chaldean Empire. And Nebuchadnezzar rebuilt Babylon, making it the richest city in the world. Built grand palaces, huge ziggurats everywhere, beautiful gardens with complex irrigation systems. Now, the thing that's really cool about what he built here was the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And so we're going to talk about, oh, let's go right here. Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And here's a picture of what we think it may have looked like. The gardens are long gone. We can't find them anymore. But there are um, primary resources that have told us what it looked like, what he imported, brought from another place to his um, region. So brought from, imported from another country to um, Babylon, which is in the Mesopotamia region. He's said to have married a queen from um, Ethiopia, and she missed her homeland. It was very lush and very beautiful. And so he built these gardens for his wife, and he um, imported many, many um, flora, which would be um, greenery and trees and all these plants that grow in Africa to Mesopotamia and had to have irrigation to have them live there in that climate. So that's a picture of what they would, what they, what we think it might have looked like. Now there are tons of pictures online, and the Hanging Gardens of Babylon are considered one of the seven ancient wonders of the world. So you might want to check those out and just do a Google search. Really cool stuff there. So he, and in the midst of doing all that, he established a major trade route between the Persian Gulf and through the Mes, uh, Mediterranean that passed through his city. Traders came from everywhere through a caravan. They would that caravan is a series of. Um, Camels and, oh, what do you call those things? Camels and wagons. Oh, my gosh, wagons. Camels and wagons that would um, bring all of these goods to um, Babylon there. And their astronomers studied the skies and created more calendars and found more consistency in keeping up with time as it passes. But after Nebuchadnezzar died, he was a strong ruler. After he died, there was a series of weak rulers that um, did not rule very well. Then they had some poor harvest and trade began to slow because they didn't have a surplus to trade anymore. And they were invaded by the Persians in 539 BC. So we don't really need to know the date, but we do need to know that this empire starts to fall due to the Persians. And that's going to lead us into some other battles later and some other wars. So... That's the Chaldean Empire. Pretty cool stuff. They are very interesting. Got a lot of stuff going on. And um, the Hanging Gardens are very cool. Now, remember, um, I'm last, so I want to remind you, please make sure you go do the checkup that you need to do. Don't forget that. That is the last step of doing your video notes. All right. See you later. Bye.